Hello, welcome. In the series of seven lectures in the domain called ethics, particularly with reference to engineers, we have so far covered five themes. We began with an introduction as to where is the necessity for uh, ethics, what is its relevance for engineers and the engineering profession, who are all the eminent thinkers and philosophers in the domain called ethics, and what is the necessity for codification of ethics in the particularly two lectures by Mr. Viswanath, the processes and methodologies for codification, the issues in formulating a code, the experience of the West and the experience of countries like India, the agencies that are charged with the responsibility for evolving codes and the agencies that grew later how discipline wise within engineering, how they felt need for new codes in specific context to their branch of specialization, we noted. In the lecture that immediately preceded this one, this is the sixth and in fifth, Mr. Vishwanath also focused on what are the parallel bodies to international agencies that uphold the ethical dimension of this profession there. Now towards the end of the lecture, Mr. Vishnath said there are many dilemmas you know, that confront the profession and uh, what is the nature of these dilemmas and how we need to look at from a broader perspective is what we are going to discuss in this particular module. Let us note that this is titled as Moral and Ethical Dilemmas and Hierarchy of Moral Values. This is uh, going to give us an idea that uh, what do you mean by a, a, an issue relating to the moral dilemmas there and why we need to discuss the hierarchy in this particular context here. Again, I need to tell you that quick recap of code of ethics in engineering, code of ethics in engineering, why it evolved, code of ethics in engineering with many examples are intended to serve as a backgrounder for what we are going to discuss today. Because you may get a doubt that when these codes are already available there, where is the necessity to discuss dilemma? Secondly, when these codes are available there, how and why they are flouted? And what are the institutional mechanisms that failed? Because we have shown in the first lecture that many of these accidents, uh, many of the compromises either in design or otherwise, for instance, data security, why are they happening when the codes are available? You may naturally get a doubt there. Is it because people are not taught about this or is it left to be observed only by institutions responsible and members are left out? Is it not part of curriculum? And what needs to be done for us to take it forward? So there are two questions here. Structurally, where are these ethics that deal with adherence and how it should be done? Secondly, what is the job of the professional bodies? Third, why do we frequently get into these dilemmas there? Let us go further into this with the help of, say, two or three arguments specifically. In the discussion about environment versus development, what are the broad debates in this area? Social scientists say that say 
no development. Whereas imperative of development calls that to say there must be greater dams, more number of you see thermal power stations, more hydels, more forests must be cut off and more professions must be created, more jobs must be created, more GDP, more GNP, more per capita income, these things development versus environment is suppose you take this. You know. Question number one is what is the solution to a problem? What needs to be done? Which decision has to be taken? And what are the significant inputs that need to be taken into this? These are common questions and uh, we often see both in media and otherwise as to how these moral dilemmas need to be addressed to. This may be the case with uh, any other profession as such there like for instance use of several tests relating to medical profession. So that is a different branch altogether there. But in engineering there may be instances where one has to deal with a moral or ethical dilemma quite often especially in developing countries like India. What is moral or ethical dilemmas? Suppose we look at some of the uh, instances here. For instance, a product is designed for the benefit of one party, but if the utilization of the product starts, it starts affecting the ecological balance. So how are we going to uh, look at it there? To further go deeply into this aspect, a dam has to be constructed which would control flooding, provide drinking water, would benefit a lot of other activities, but at the same time, a lot of people living in the surrounding areas lose their occupation, homes, cultivable lands, basic livelihoods. So the dilemma here is that you see for the policy makers and for entire chain of engineers, should we go ahead with the, the dam or not? The number of instances you can recall, you know. The second example is also very interesting in this context. The Indian arm of General Motors in 2013 admitted to government that an internal probe revealed that they violated the testing norms. I mean the General Motors reported. The employees of the company refitted already approved engines used in Tavera cars that were sent for inspection so that they meet the norms there. It also manipulated, you note the word manipulated, the weight of several of the models in order to meet other norms there. It's the most important. So the, one of the aspects that we need to note is that you see the emission norms are subject to manipulation, which means that you say, while code says something or the production norms say something, you are in a position to manipulate that. It was only ethical on the part of the company to report the matter to the higher ups, to the governments there. So what happened? Production and sale of two variants of Tavera cars were stopped. And uh, it also announced recall of a lacquered plus of Tavera cars manufactured between 2005 and 13 to meet the emission norms there. You know. What is the question here? I mean, the GM adhered to norms here without much debate and discussion here. 
when confronted with the fundamental questions, what to do and how to act in complex situations, and to that extent, that contrasted values or decisional premises could apply in situations one is entering into the world of these dilemmas there, which we need to note. Isn't it? So, two cases we have already covered, like the dilemmas of policymakers, as far as environment and development are concerned. Second is issues relating to emission norms, when violated, the company mustered courage to report and then withdraw the cards there. Inferences are clearly for you to draw. Ethical problems, even in engineering, rarely have a single solution. That also needs to be looked into by you. So, they may contain a range of solutions that are clearly right, but relatively better, or not appropriate at all. Many examples, you know, the professional bodies already have documented some of these examples. So, a fact, supposed to be a fact, when it is added a value, you know, if you look at from the value perspective there, then these facts appear in a different perspective as such there. Welfare of the people versus the need for a dam there, you know. The engineer faces the critical challenge and it is at this point that critical thinking and effective decision making skills come into sharper focus. Say this again. Can we just say that there is only one solution to a problem is one. Ethical problems like engineering rarely have, as I told you, single solution as such there. So, when it comes to other areas there, is there a hierarchy of moral values? First, let us understand the hierarchy of moral values here. Moral values are those that are within the purview of ethics. Honesty, loyalty, attitude towards others. For purpose of this lecture, we can call non-moral values which are like preferences in terms of, you know, which color you like, which type of food do you eat, what kind of games and sports you like, you know. All these, you know, principles and values that we choose as professionals, which are also incidentally critical. Often instances where one has to decide between the right and wrong and make a right decision. Values help us in differentiating between the right and wrong. For instance, value of honesty, whether copying is right or wrong. Can we, is there any second opinion about this? No. Value of honesty helps engineering professionals to make right decisions and be fair in their professional dealings or in their professional decision making. Many values exist both in our personal and professional lives. In an engineering profession, if you are successful, it is because not one or two, but because of a set of values there. So, let me repeat that to say, in engineering profession, you are successful because of not just one or two, but cluster of values. So, look at this in a pyramidical fashion, the different values that we have and how these are organized in hierarchy in terms of their significance, 
values are arranged according to their importance and relevance. Some values are very important, some may be less relevant and so on. One might be tempted to say that ultimately values differ from individual to individual. So, what about profession here? This is where code of ethics play a significant role in guiding our decisions there. Individuals decide their values based on the needs, interests and their professional conditions. Whereas, values, every individual should have their own set of values and this possibly they adhere and uh, this is decided their own significance in a hierarchy there. Some people may prefer to give top preference to professional values while some give preference to their spiritual values. Whatever they are, the situations in which individuals live and work also determine the hierarchy. Why? Individuals decide their values based on the needs, interests and their professional conditions as I said. And values, individuals have their own set of values and decide, decides their significance in the hierarchy. If you look at this particular issue in a more focused way, instances where decisions may lead to both good and bad, the ethical dilemma. One has to be able to strike a balance between good and bad. In this critical juncture, hierarchy of values help in making effective decisions. And there ought to be a line between our moral and non-moral values. So, first of all, we need to have clarity on one's own values. The more important a value, the higher it is in a hierarchy. And hierarchy of values helps in determining how we perceive an issue, a policy, a problem and get a perspective about this, followed by how we are going to initiate action. A combination of this would uh, lead us to what is called a decision. But many times, various factors affect moral responsibility. This needs to be carefully be noted. We can possibly note more points with the help of references that we cited here and issues relating to that frequently demand more attention there. Well, in the next lecture, we will be taking up value framework, how the moral dilemmas are going to be resolved, keeping in view our individual values and those of the organizations. We may be moving to the last presentation in the ethics cluster on what is called factors affecting moral responsibility and the degrees of responsibility. Thank you.